Uh, thank you for this opportunity to come and speak to you. Um, my name is Cherie Cade and I'm from a company called Sean Cade Training and Consulting. And uh, I was asked before not, not to give my titles and things, I, I don't really have titles, um, but who is Cherie really? Um, Cherie is a nature lover, uh, specifically a bird watcher. Um, I've spent over 24 years in the conservation in industry. Uh, helping the conservation businesses become sustainable and um, that, that's why I understand business. Why I do what I do is to help people recognize their value. I want people to know that they have value no matter what title you have, no matter what position you have, no matter what education you have, you have value, you have things to contribute and uh, it's my uh, desire to help people in their situations to show that value and feel that value and give that value. So I'm all about value and I'm all about thinking. So in our training, we don't train you just the information, we train you to think. So that when I leave, you're not overwhelmed by just a bunch of information, but that you have something that you can take and use and that you can think further for yourself. Because everybody has the ability, and I strongly believe that if you have time to think, and you know that you are safe to think, you can solve all problems. Okay, within you, you know how to solve those problems, we just need the time. All right, so that's a little bit about who I am and what I value. Um, and uh, I have been asked today to talk with, at this leadership boot camp, and it's specifically about the importance of rest. Okay, and I'm going to talk to you uh, as leaders about a personal journey that I went through. So I've made some notes. I don't usually talk with notes, but I'm going to, for the first part, use my notes. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to be very vulnerable with you. I'm going to express with you where I was at a number of years ago as a result of burnout. Okay, and I want to show you uh, in a very vulnerable way that this is not a space that you want to be in. So I've pulled out and I've written onto the notes uh, some initial thoughts I was having, okay, um, when I went through burnout. And I want you to have a look and see uh, the journey that it is. And then we'll go from there to how, how you can prevent it and how you can grow out of that, okay. So it's very, very important to make sure that we are not going to the burnout point. Okay. So I've entitled this burnout, the kiss of death. The kiss of death. Okay. And then the choices that keep us from that betrayal. Okay. So this is now I'm going to, I'm going to share with you. This is a, something that I wrote during my period of burnout. All right. So it says... The will is sorted, the insurance and the bills are covered, the house is nearly ready, the plan is in place, the details are finalised, the date and the time are set. I am at complete and utter peace, probably for the very first time. I'm happy, I'm maybe even excited even, and it won't be long now. Then, with less than two weeks to go, something made me say it. Something made me spit it out. Perhaps in the last, at, uh, perhaps a last and final effort from the tiniest of sane parts in me. Perhaps something else. But it cried out. It cried out, I'm going to kill myself. It's all planned. It's all sorted. I lost everything. I lost my job, my career, my income, my savings, my relationships, my confidence, my car and my other material possessions, my independence, my health, my mental capacity. I lost people's trust and at times I lost my faith. And I was alone in this. No one could understand. They could not understand how debilitating, agonizing and completely extreme the pain was, both physically and emotionally. They could not understand how real controlling and overwhelming the darknesses. They could not understand how you can physically feel your heart shatter and your body being cut by its sharp edges. They could not understand how you had no way to bear the unbearable. 
They could not understand how you are not afraid to die, but in actual fact you're terrified of living. They could not understand how panic and claustrophobia became your best friends. They could not understand how you feel becomes words like shattered and sharp and stabbing and cutting and bleeding and drowning. They could not understand how the thought of death becomes peaceful and warm. They could not understand how your heart constricts tighter each day. They could not understand how your body and your soul became numb and how your mind is a blurry haze in overwhelm. They could not understand how the intensity of your pain causes, causes you to build up walls and keep, keep, to keep it away. And pretending that all is good becomes a very, your only way to cope. They could not understand how hope seemed laughable. They could not understand how having no one understand brings you to the agonizing point of deep isolation. They could not understand how the darkness surrounding you is like quicksand and it holds on to you. You can't breathe and the harder you try to escape, the deeper it seems to pull you in until there is no energy or no desire to keep fighting. They could not understand how the heaviness, despair and anguish are your constant companions. They couldn't understand how numb ambivalence becomes the way you cope. They could not understand how your fears become that everyone will actually see you as how you see yourself and they will hate it. You could not understand how the pain and the anguish is too much for others, how it scares them away and how the loneliness steps in. They could not understand how when people ask if you're okay, you simply answer, yeah, I'm just tired. When what you're really feeling is, I'm tired of trying, I'm tired of hoping, I'm tired of existing, I'm tired of breathing, I'm tired of living, my heart is tired, it's tired of beating, and I'm tired of being. So you're left with all of these pieces, broken and shattered. They leave you heart torn and empty handed. So that was an excerpt of something that I wrote when I went through a burnout. Now, <clears throat> what I want to tell you is that this burnout, I was fine. Okay, I was coping fine with stress. I was working, I was working long hours. I was doing what needed to be done. The quality of my work was good. There was no issues there. Okay, but what happened over time, I started sleeping less. My sleep patterns became irregular. And eventually I was down to only sleeping between an hour and 40, mi or 40 minutes and an hour a night. And I was just working, just working, working, working to get things right. Okay, along with emotional trauma, and the stress of the work that I was doing, it led to a com complete breakdown, this insomnia. You cannot push your body to the places there. And we think we're okay. And I want you to be aware that it's okay to say I'm not okay. It's okay to take the rest when you need it. It led to a breakdown in which I lost at least three years of my life, okay? For the first two years, I was so drugged on medication because they were trying to correct my sleep pattern and trying to get me out of suicide thoughts because I had no sleep pattern. You understand the depression that I was in was brought around because I wasn't sleeping, not because I'm struggling with depression, but because of the imbalance of not sleeping and what gets fixed when you sleep. Okay, and it led to breakdown, complete breakdown. I, I couldn't think a thought. Okay, there was no closed end and it just, I hit it like a wall. All right, I was fine until I wasn't. All right, and it took me nearly three years to get out of this. All right, you understand what you lose in three years of not being able to work, not being able to think, not being able to pull things together. Okay, you, you can't, I'm still trying to cope with the loss of what I lost. All right, so my, I'm standing here as a warning and I'm telling you, please don't go there. Respect the choices that you have. Okay, so I wrote here, so here I am and here we are. All right, many of us are broken in different ways for a variety of reasons and to a different depth. This is a part of life now, okay? 
Difficulty is a part of life. All right. And we need to find ways to learn to cope. Leaders seek it out. Okay. Leaders seek out the way to go forward. Okay. Many of us use words like, I'm too tired. All right. Or I'm too busy. Or I feel like I need to catch up. Or I'm always in overwhelm. Okay. When you start saying things like that, when somebody says to me, oh, I'm just tired, or I'm just too busy, or I, I need to just catch up, I'll be okay when I catch up, it's warning flags for me. You, know, you must understand from my perspective of where I've gone now, immediately I'm going to that person, no, 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 no. You're aging burnout. Okay. And that leads to breakdown and all sorts of trauma that we don't need in our life. So it's time now to stop. You can only do what you can do in a day. Okay, I want you to hear those words because they're actually profound. You can only do what you can do in a day. And you are not the next person. All right, you are not the person that maybe has boundless energy and no children and can achieve, you know, six hours of work in a day or whatever the case is. You might be somebody different. All right. I want you to realize that we need to work to our ideas of what success is. Yeah. Okay. Not what everybody is telling you you should be working towards. Okay. We often have this idea that only if we work so many hours can we become a success, right? Yeah. Okay. We often have this idea that only if we work on weekends and evenings are we loyal and hardworking and committed to what we're trying to achieve. Isn't this what we think? Okay. I'm, I'm not being loyal. I, I'm not being hardworking. I'm not showing commitment because I'm having Sunday off. What, what is this? Okay. We often think that success means having lots of money or being known by everyone or being able to show up everywhere and be seen. Right. This is not success. That is what we let other people define as success. Okay. And I want you to hear that that's other people's idea of success. All right. What is important for us to stop living in overwhelm, okay, to start living in success and productivity, is to start learning to define what success is for you. Okay. If all you want to do in life is be an amazing mother who raises amazing children that can go out and conquer, that is success if you do that. Yeah. Right? I read something the other day that if your children want to hang out with you as adults, you've been successful. Yeah. Okay? And, and if that's your desire, if that is what you want, all right, and you achieve that, you are successful. It matters not what anybody else says. I want you to start learning to define your own success. Not success by everybody else's standards because maybe they're driving a Mercedes Benz. Well, good for them. Okay. Uh, when I see people drive fancy cars, I wonder how much debt they're in. Mm. Because the reality is, if we haven't learned to live well in our budget, mm. when it's small, yeah. when we get a big budget, yeah. we're still making the same mistakes. Yeah. Okay. We're going to just be in bigger debt. Mm. All right. So I want you to start learning to make decisions. If, I'm, if I had defined for myself what success is earlier on, mm -hmm. instead of chasing the direction people were pushing me in because I had the skills to do it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. I, I, I am a skilled worker. I can do numerous things. Mm -hmm. And because of that, people push you in a direction. Mm -hmm. And you have to be at this level and you have to be doing these things. That's not what I wanted. Yeah. But I was being pushed there. And look where it led me. Okay. I, I, I lost all sense of what was appropriate. Okay. And it didn't lead me to success. Working long hours, working overtime, even though my quality of my work was good, where did it lead me? Yeah. Didn't lead me to success. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, I want you to realize today that you have choices. You always have choice. Nobody can take that away, no matter what the government is doing, no matter what's happening in your family, no matter what's going on in life, you have choice. Okay. Usually your choice is between good and bad. Mm. I can choose right or I can choose wrong. Okay. Yeah. So you always have a choice. All right. In this case, you have two choices. Your first choice is 
let me head straight like a speeding car towards burnout. Okay, that's your first choice. The second choice is, I'm going to choose success. You notice that they don't sit in the same place. Okay, the, the, the steaming towards uh, burnout because I'm, I need to be seen as this totally committed, totally hardworking thing. You do need to be committed to be successful. You do need to be committed to build a business. It's fact. Okay. It does not need you 24 hours a day. If that's what you're building, you are working for that business. It is not working for you. Okay, stop doing that. All right, the reason people go into business is that they can have more flexible time to be with their family, the opportunity to feed their family, go on holiday, do all these kinds of things because you're free of that bound salary. Okay, so why do you then build it to keep you trapped? That if you leave, it all collapses. Okay, you understand that's your choice heading towards burnout. All right. Well, I want you to start learning to head towards <coughs> success and real productivity. Mm -hmm. Really making ground in what you're doing by being smarter in the choices that you make. Yeah. Okay. You've been lied to all your life about time and the importance of rest. Okay. I bet you, you've heard somewhere in your life, somebody say to you, oh, you've just been so lazy. You're just being so this, you're just being so that. And so in, in the back of our minds, when you sit down on the couch at the end of the day and you want to watch a, a video, what's going on in your head? I should be doing this, I should be doing that. If I sit for an hour, I'm going to feel guilty because some, somebody in my family is going to be like, well, why are you just lying around? Okay. The reality is that's not, we cannot go constantly. Your body, it doesn't matter who you are. Your body cannot do that. Mm, yeah. It's going to break at some point. And an empty cup cannot pour. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Rather, keep your cup full, yeah. right? And yeah. expend when it's needed, okay? And then go back and refill, mm, yeah. okay? If your battery on your phone gets low, what do you do? Charge it. Immediately, it's like a panic thing, right? Yeah. Okay, you're like, I need a charger, who's got a charger? I need to put this in, you know, we even go to our cars and plug it into the car, all right? Mm -hmm. I want to ask you the question, why are you not doing that for yourself? Yeah. Okay? Nothing in life lasts permanently, so why are you not choosing to recharge yourself? Okay. One of the biggest lessons I learned from what I went through was to say no. Okay, and to say no without feeling guilty. All right. The second thing was to learn to take rest when it's needed. All right. So one thing you'll know about me: after eight o'clock at night time, I don't answer messages. I don't look at emails. In fact, after six, you can forget getting an answer from them. At eight o'clock, that phone is is on airplane mode or in the drawer. You understand? Okay. Because I, I am running a business where there is no midnight crisis. Okay. A, a lack of, of uh, planning on your part does not mean a crisis on mine. Okay. So just because you suddenly thought and you didn't plan ahead and you didn't do, doesn't mean I have to now live in this crisis. Okay. So I am in a training business. What emergency is there? What emergency training is there? Why do I have to answer my phone late? Why do I have to answer my phone on the weekends? You will get no answers out of me on the weekend. If you get an answer out of me on the weekend, it's a miracle. Okay. Because that is my time. It is my time to recoup. It is my time to rest. It is my time to be with my family. That's why we do business. So that I can have more time to be with my family. And what do we end up doing? Working all the time away from them. Okay. No rest and living for other people's standards of success brings burnout. Okay. I, I, I'll tell you another thing that we do. We go onto Facebook or Instagram and we look. Right? And we go, so-and-so oh, sold so much. So-and-so did this. So-and-so did that. I should be doing that. No, wh why should you be doing that? Right? You're you. Do you. Okay. 
Yes, you need to have sales, you need to build your business, you need to do all those things. It doesn't require you 24 hours a day. Okay, stop comparing yourself, you're not them. Right, and it's probably lying to you anyway. Right. Because people mainly post only the good things. Yeah. Okay, so that's not everyday life that's being posted on there. All right, it's the special things, the birthdays and the celebrations and the weddings and the holidays and, you know, children's milestones. It's not normal life. Yeah. The picture does not show you that it took that mom three hours to get that child dressed for school because yeah. the child was having a bad day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're not, you're not alone. All right, you, you stop comparing yourself. All that does is lead to anxiety, overwhelm and burnout. And that's when your body and your mind betray you. Okay. I, I am a thinker. I, I'm a person that thinks vision-wise, strategic-wise. I've relied on my brain my whole working life to help me to plan and to plot. The worst torture was not having access to that while I, while I was burned out, while I was in breakdown. That was the worst thing, was that I couldn't even think a logical thought. It was just so jumbled and messed up. Imagine how torturous that is, guys. Okay, don't go there. All right, these things come because we choose not to slow down, okay? They come because we don't take rest, yeah. all right? They come because we don't care for ourselves on a consistent basis. You've come here this weekend, you're going to do some rest and care, you're going to do some learning, okay? You're going to do some balance, but I'm willing to bet that this is not unique. This is a unique experience. That we don't take this time out for ourselves. Okay. And, I, and I, want you, I want you to realize that you need to choose. Choose. Okay. You can either choose to work towards someone else's idea of success and hard work. Okay. Or you can choose to believe your value is in your long hours of work. Is your value in how long you work? Where's your value? What, do, what gives you value? Where, what defines your value? Satisfaction. Hey? Satisfaction. Okay. Yeah. So we need to decide what our success is so we can know when we're satisfied. Yeah. All right? But your value is that it's inbuilt in that you're a person. Yeah. You have life. You have impact on others. You exist. And therefore you have value. Yeah. Okay. Stop letting other people define what that is. You do, you do not have to show up every day, work 18 hours, 20 hours, whatever it is, bust yourself, uh, you, you know, make yourself so stressed out and anxious and stuff to be valuable. Yes. You are valuable right here sitting just listening to me. You are valuable when you wake up in the morning and take your first breath. You are valuable. Stop yeah. letting other people define what that is and trying to strive towards it. Yeah. Okay. Don't choose to remain uh, constantly connected and comparing yourself to others. Stop it. Just stop it. Okay. Choose where you can have your most impact. Where you can have your, give your value. Right. Not every customer is your customer. I'll teach you this if I teach you business skills. The same is not every person is your friend. It doesn't mean that I can't be polite and respectful and kind towards people. It just means that I'm going to put the value of my time into the people that matter the most to me and who know who I am and what I am valuable for. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to allow them to impact in my life. I'm not going to change for somebody's picture on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. This is your journey. This life you've got, you've got one. It's your journey, okay? Not somebody else's journey. So it's for you to choose what success is for you. It's for you to choose to set aside time to rest and time to reflect, okay? It's for you to choose how you want to add value in life. Those are your choices. And I want to tell you, leaders choose right and they lead by example, okay? Proper leaders... Don't just have fancy words, right? You will, you will see them lead by example, okay? And they've chosen. Leaders choose right. So I want you to stop bragging about long hours and overtime, okay? Yeah. 
I go to companies and it's my job to help managers to manage, okay, in their position. And one of the things I do when I do the first interview is I ask them, so how's it going at work? And what are you struggling with? And nine times out of 10, they will tell me, oh, it's just so much work. I'm, I'm taking work home. I'm working overtime and stuff like that. And they, like, they, but they're excited to tell me. Yeah, yeah. And the first thing I say to them is, oh, well, we've got to fix that. And they're shocked. Okay. If you cannot finish your work and leave your workplace in your work hours, there is something wrong. Yeah. Your system is not correct. Your process is wrong. The people you're working with are not achieving their goals. There's something. You understand? You should not have to work over time. Now, there's going to be times in life where you do. Okay? I'm not saying never do it. I'm just saying just balance it. Okay? If you're an auditor, for example, tax season is a, is a, it's long hours. But it's a season. You understand? Yeah. It's not the whole year. Yeah. All right. So stop bragging about long hours and overtime. Stop bragging about how busy and stressed you are. Yeah. Those yeah. are not good things. <laughs> but we so proudly say, oh, I'm so busy. I can't stop. I, you understand? <coughs> we want people to see us as these, like, so busy on the go stuff. Like, I lead a busy life. But scheduled in is a lot of rest. And I feel, I feel rocks about telling you no when you're stepping into my rest time that's been booked. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you no. That weekend I'm off. This weekend I'm not. I, no. Okay. Uh, stop bragging about working on weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, unless unless you pay, pay to work in the shop. It's a different story. Okay. Stop bragging about all the time you spend away from your family. Yo. Because you're working and building your business. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the, the thing is, the cost is too high. Yeah. I'm standing there as an example of that. And I, I'm telling you, I was lucky. I got out of it before killing myself. Okay. And I got out of it with amazing people and support. Okay. The, the, you've got to build your people. And we're going to talk about that later. All right, but stop bragging about it. The cost is too high. I'm telling you that. Your body and your mind are going to betray you. And there's nothing you can do about it when you get to that point. Except rest and recuperate. So I'm telling you, charge your battery along the way, not when it has to be replaced. Okay. All right, so you get to choose. This is an important thing. This is an empowering thing, people. You get to choose. The power is in your hands. It's in your thinking. It's in your value. John always says, you win or lose by the way you choose. So decide to decide right. Okay. Amen. It's very, it's very important things. Yeah. You will win or you will lose by the way you choose. So decide to decide right. It's your choice. Choose right. Yeah. And sometimes that means no. Sometimes that means rest today. Sometimes that means, okay, it's 12 o'clock, but I, I didn't sleep all night, so I need to take a nap for that hour, and not feeling guilty about it, yeah. so that you can actually pour when you get up, okay? When we are learning to choose well, our attitude is what is important, okay? Now, I'm willing to bet that most of you will tell me attitude determines altitude, altitude. okay, and it does. But not in the way you think. Okay. Not in that I'm sacrificing time, family, health, everything to achieve my altitude. And when I get there, I'm all alone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You'll get there. Hard, hard work will get you there. But what you have and who you are up there is that you're going to find very lonely. Yeah. Okay. And there's a way to do both. Right? I'm living proof of this. There is a way to build your life and have family and friends and the things you want. Okay. Right. So attitude becomes all important. So love will become your attitude towards others. Right? I'm going to choose to be loving towards others. Not in love with others. Loving. Love is a verb. It's not just an emotion. It's a verb. That means I choose every day to be loving in my actions towards those that are valuable. Faith will be your attitude towards God. 
Hope will be your attitude towards the future. Okay? Everything revolves around your attitude. All right. Attitude is our most valuable asset, especially when our lives are overwhelming. Okay? You're going to have to shift your thinking. When you're so stressed out and you're so overwhelmed, you need to sit down and regroup. Take some breaths. Think about it. Write out your frustrations. Take the time to figure out what it is and how you're going to go forward. It does not help you to run around in panic. Okay. My brother always says, you panic, you die. Because what happens, your brain can only do one of two things. Okay. It can do the, 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 the emotional um, fight, flight, or freeze. Right. Or it can do think. It cannot do the two together. All right, so as soon as we're in fight, flight, or freeze, panic mode, overstressed, overwhelmed, you are not thinking. It's as simple as that. Okay, and I love these people that tell me, oh, no, I'm so amazing in crisis and stuff. If you're amazing in crisis, it's because you've built muscle memory to cope through that. And I'm willing to bet afterwards you're as sick as a dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Okay, all right. Attitude will determine whether you become bitter or whether you become better. Right? Because we, we can look at it and we go, oh, they've got so much and I've got nothing. Yeah. What you focus on grows. Remember that. So if you're going to focus on being negative, the negativity in your life is just going to be a back. And you'll be amazed at how many negative people you will surround yourself with. Yeah. Okay? Because misery loves company. So mm -hmm. negative people, if that's what you're going to focus on, negative circumstances, you're going to get that. Expect it. Mm. Okay? But if you focus on being positive, on looking for the opportunity instead of the challenge, okay, if you focus on getting out of where I am and thinking through things, that will grow in your life. Opportunities will grow. Uh, chances will come. Right? And this is what great leaders do. Right? If we don't choose well in life's challenges, we become cynical, we become bitter, we become brittle, and we become burnt out. That's a fact. You get people that are like, oh, it doesn't matter what I do, it's just going to be bad. Yeah. They, they're cynical now. They, they, they've lost that. And you see it, yeah. okay, around you. Right, if we fail to choose to respond well in times of stress and challenge, our emotional wounds, they fester. Okay, anything that you have emotionally that is not dealt with, when stress and challenge comes away, it makes you a nasty person. <laughs> Anybody here is such a lovely person when you're stressed? No, there's no such thing. Yeah, savage. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of people that are. Okay, because what happens when we're stressed and overwhelmed and super challenged, all that emotional hurt and things that we haven't dealt with, the mindset, the attitude, the focus on growth, it comes out and it is not pretty. Okay, and, and what do we try and do after that? We try and justify our outbursts. No, yeah. oh, I had the right to be angry. I had the right. No, you didn't. You have the right to choose. You didn't have to choose to let it out like that. Okay? You didn't have to choose to put yourself in stress. You could have found a way around it. All right. I'm the kind of person, if I have a challenge or a, or a situation that is stressful to me, I can guarantee you I'm not going back there. The first thing that happens after I've dealt with it, all right, is I go back and I reflect and I say, how do I avoid that? In business, it means, oh, I'll put in this system, or I'll train that person to do that, or I'll, you understand? In my personal life, it means, okay, I'm going to realize that that's not about me, this is about that situation, right? So that I'm not emoting in that situation. I, I do not want to go back to that stress. If you are repeating stress, you're being a fool. You understand what I'm saying? If every month end in your business is chaos and a stress, what are you doing? Mm. Sort it out. Find the way. That's going to take away the stress. Month end doesn't have to be a stress. Okay? Month end should be, I pay my bills, I sort it out, and we go move on. Yeah. All right. But we've got to work towards setting that up. All right. So when we are stressed and we don't respond well, our hurt multiplies. And there's a great saying, uh, hurt people hurt people. Sure. Okay? Yeah. People who are yes. hurt, they hurt people. Yes. Yeah. All right. So if somebody's hurtful to you, Rather than reacting in anger, I want you to try and respond in like, sure, I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry for what you're going through. Can I help? Okay, because that's where they're at. All right. 
If we don't choose well in time, it brings anger, guilt, and shame, and then burnout. And when you're burnt out, you can't contribute anyway. So it's not a great choice. All right. The best thing about all of this that we're discussing here is that you have choice. Okay. In all of this, you have choice. You have the ability to choose your response. All right. It is our attitude uh, that we choose towards life that creates our greatest possibilities. Okay. If you choose to approach things with a positive attitude, with a good mindset, with a, I'm going to grow, I'm going to learn, I promise you, you'll suddenly find so many people that inspire and encourage and motivate around you. Amen. Okay. And you will find people that will actually step up and get in the mud with you and say, let's sort this out. Let's move. I've been through this. Let's do it. Okay. But it's, you've got to be in that mindset. All right. Choose to get into the right frame of mind. And surround yourself in the right way. Okay. I always say with, with, with staff and managers and things like that, they've got, there's the five minute rule. You know the five minute rule? Mm -mm. Okay. So something bad happens, something stressful, something ugly, something that took you by surprise. Right? You can go to the person you trust the most. All right? And you have five minutes to let it all out. Yeah. No interruption. No correcting it. No telling you anything. Just let it out. All right? After that, you put a plan down on paper. And then we don't talk about it again. All right? Because that's not going to take you anywhere. Worry and anxiety and whining, it's like a rocking chair. You can sit on it and rock, but you go nowhere. Okay? It gives you something to do, but nowhere to go. Okay? You, you're going to make the choice after that five minutes to put a plan down. How am I going to get through this? What am I going to do? And the next time you go to that person to vent, they should be wise and tell you, no, no, we're not going back. How are we on the plan? Okay. When you drive a car, the rear view mirror is this big, not the windscreen. You understand? Because you only need that much look back. It's about my mindset going forward. The, the windscreen is huge yeah. compared to the rear view mirror that's allowing me to look back. It's important, but it's not everything. Yeah. Okay. The bravest thing that I've ever done was to choose and to choose life and to fight for it. Okay, you get to choose. So now I want to introduce you to some interesting things in business because we're business owners or people going into business. We're going to become leaders or we are leaders already. And I want you to realize that there's not a one size fits all solution to every problem. Stop trying to do that. Okay, it's like when people come to me and they've got a, a BCom in business management and they say, you know, well, we're doing a strategy session, so we should be doing this. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing that here. Okay. I'm like, this method needs to be, why? The, the principle is what I carry. The principle is this needs to be done. We need to have a strategy. We need to have a vision. We need to have these things in place. How we get there doesn't have to be determined by anybody else but that organization. Yeah. Okay. Because it's going to be their culture, their ethics, their morality that determines that. Okay, so we learn from our degrees and our diplomas all these things and methods and opportunities, but we take the principle and we apply it in life. Because it's not a one size fits all. All right, so here's an interesting thing. Do you know that there are some places in the world that have a four day work week? And they did this to increase productivity. Mind blown, right? Here we are going, I've got to work nights. I've got to go work weekends. And there's countries like France and Belgium, and even some of the UK companies are starting to do it, where they're insisting on a four-day work week. Four days, Monday to Thursday. Okay? Or Tuesday to Friday, if you're on that shift. You understand? So they're insisting on this, and they're doing it to create productivity. Understand this. I took a whole day of work away from somebody, and they're more productive. What is that telling you about the importance of rest? Mm, yeah. The importance of being with your family at family time. The importance of building relationships and being able to play sports and do all these kinds of things. Yeah. Okay, they've realized that the stats show a total increase. In fact, in all those companies, they had over a 22% increase in productivity. Mm. Now, 22% doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're working with productivity, that is a huge stride. Okay. 
I, I will throw a party when somebody tells me that the methods that we taught them got them a 5% increase. That's like celebration stuff. This four-day work week has proven to increase productivity by 22%. Okay? It's reduced burnout. Okay? And as a result, has reduced absenteeism in these companies by 66%. So, because people are healthy, well rested, they come to work healthy and well, right? It's improved morale. We know what morale is, the, the joy of being together in a workspace and, and growing together and learning together. It's improved health. It's improved people's finances, their personal finances. It's improved their relationships, okay? The revenue has increased, all right? It's increased their ability to work, okay? Their productivity has improved because how many of you have sat down and you're so tired and you're so overwhelmed and you've got to write something and you spent you write it like five times mm -hmm. and then even at the end you're not satisfied with it because you're tired mm -hmm. you're not going to give your best results yeah. okay so when you at that point go away and have a cup of tea and a nap or whatever the case is rest come back and do it it'll take you five minutes yeah, yeah. okay this is what they're learning in this case the people's ability to work increases. All right. In companies, you realize that we, we in South Africa, we've got this eight-hour day, right? Okay, normally. Uh, 45 hour weeks. Okay. It's one of the highest amounts of hours worked in a week in the world. Just want to let you know that. Okay. And and we're expecting, we're thinking that if they're in the office from eight to five, we're getting eight hours of work out of them. The average worker is working three to four hours. Sure, sure. In a day. The average worker. Okay? So you your good workers are working five. Your not so great workers, I'm not even sure it's worth paying them. Okay. But you understand this. So now they've taken this thinking, all these studies worldwide, and they've said, well, let's just take a day out of the equation because I'm not getting the work out of them anyway. They may as well be rested and come and actually work when they're with us. Okay. So. It, it has improved mental health significantly. It's increased life and job satisfaction in people. Okay, because there's more time for healthy habits, like making proper food. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's more time for proper sleep. Mm -hmm. There's more time for exercise. There's more time to build relationships. Mm -hmm. All right? So they're seeing such a change in the health and the outlook of these people, in the mental space in which they dwell. Okay, there's even a reduced carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's not driving to work on the Friday or the one day of the week that they would have normally been driving. Okay? You know the work week in Austria is 30 hours max. You can't work more than that. And Austria is one of the richest countries in the world. Okay? Belgium has made it law that you can only work a maximum of 32 hours in a four-day work week cycle. It's actual law. Okay? France has not made it law, but they've made in law maximum 35 hours working. Okay. And I, I want to, I'm the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to recognize, they've recognized the value. These big companies and countries and, and rich places have recognized the value of rest yeah. Yeah. and reflect, uh, reflection mm -hmm. and exercise mm -hmm. and good sleep, mm -hmm. right? And making good food. Not fast food and things like that, right? Yeah. They've recognized this and they're seeing the value. They're making the change. Okay. And so now when they come for the four or five hours a day, they're working really well. Mm -hmm. Working really hard. So you actually are getting what you're paying for. Okay. Which you're not now. And I'm telling you this because it's not a one size fits all scenario. Yeah. Your business does not have to be open seven days a week. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't have to be answered at 8 o'clock at night. Mm, yes. Unless you're a, a neurosurgeon who's on call, yeah. you don't have to answer your phone. Mm. Okay, <laughs> or a paramedic, or you understand what I'm saying. Mm. If that's your job, different scenario. Yes. Okay, but then you'll notice that you only do that once a month. Yeah. You're only on call once a month. It's not all month. Mm. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> true story. So, there's another way to think about our work day. It's the 4 by 6 hour a day. So four times six is what? 24. 24, great. So there's 24 hours in a day, eh? Hey? Mm. Yeah. So the suggestion here is that we live our lives six hours a day, rest minimum. 
Okay, six hours a day work on work days. Okay, six hours a day grow yourself. Okay, and that means it might mean cooking proper meals. It might mean exercising, it might mean reading a book, it might mean doing an online course, it might, whatever it is, you're, you're spending six hours of every day growing yourself. Okay? It might mean devotion time, whatever it is that's important to you, it might mean those things. And then six hours is personal and family time. Okay? That's the time I spend with my kids. That's the time you spend with your family. That's the time you watch TVs with, TV with your spouse or you go on date night or whatever the case is. It's also the time where if you need more than six hours of sleep, you catch up there. Okay. Six, 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 six. Six hours of work, six hours of rest, six hours of growth, and six hours with my family. Personal time. Okay. That is what coaches will teach you now. Business coaches will teach you that is the best way. Can you see it? They're not going anywhere near an eight-hour workday. And they're, in fact, making rest as important as work. It's got the same amount of hours. Right? Because we realize that this is more important. Right? This is what makes it work. Rest. Reflection. Growth, family, that's what makes your business work. Oh. All right. I want to leave you with something that helped me when I was burned out and not able to cope. And what helps me still now to keep growing. Okay. And that is the five fingered approach. And I've given you a paper. If you don't have a paper, yes, papers here. Okay? Um, and it's got a hand on it. All right. And I want you to remember these things. You're going to write on it the five things. Okay? And every day, you need to work on these five things. And we put it in hand format. And it's also all letter Fs. Okay? So it's easy to remember. And you carry your hand with you every day. Yeah. So you can remember. Okay? As you look at it, you can go, oh, I didn't do that, I didn't do that. Okay? Alright, so this is the five-fingered approach to personal resilience. What does resilience mean? Bouncing back. Yeah, you keep going, bouncing back. Okay, so I always use the analogy of an elastic band. If you take an elastic band and you stretch it and you stretch it and you stretch it, you might even see cracks start to appear, right? Yeah. And you stretch it and you stretch it and more cracks appear. But if you let go, even with those cracks, it does what? It bounces back. That's what resilience is in your life. Okay. In, in the conservation world which I come out of, resilience is what we, it's a, it's a concept that we train the felt to do, be resilient. Okay. So we put it under stress through fire, we put it under stress through different things so that it bounces back stronger and better. Obviously this is done in the right way. Okay. You can't just burn it just because you feel like burning it. Okay. It's got to be done at the right times and the right way and all these things. But it makes that felt more productive. Okay, so now take this resilience concept, your ability to bounce back. When crisis hits, when challenges come, when you're so overwhelmed, how do I cope and how do I bounce back? That's what you're learning here. And you're going to be surprised what they are. Okay, the first thumb, yeah, hold your thumb up, all right? Look at what it's doing. It's looking back, okay? No. It's not looking back, it's looking at all of you. It is forward facing, that's your first one. Forward facing, be forward facing. What does it mean to be forward facing? Say again, keep walking, keep going. Okay, and you're going forward people. Okay, progress is progress even if it's slow. Don't worry about the pace, just keep going forward. Okay, if today, like if you were going to diet or do something like that and today you did a little cheat, that's okay. We don't go back into meltdown. Mm. We go back into like, oh, okay, well, pick up. Now let's keep going forward. Yeah. Okay. Forward facing is about your mindset. Where is your mind at? What are you facing? What are you thinking about? How are you looking at it? Forward facing is where you develop your vision, your goals, where you want to be, 
Yeah. Okay? It's where we put our mind. It's the positivity, the optimism, the looking for opportunities. That's all embraced in being forward-facing. Okay? And I'm telling you, forward-facing people conquer. Yeah. Okay. And so what do we do to become forward-facing? What are the things you can do? Put a plan in place. If it's not written down, you're not going to do it. I'm just telling you that now. And if it's not written down and hanging where you see it all the time, you're not doing it. It's, it doesn't work up here. Okay. The chance of you getting to your goal or your vision when it's just this idea in your head. Because you don't get there alone. Yeah. Okay. It needs to be where you can see it. Put it down in a plan. The plan can change. Yeah. Okay. But put it down. Yeah. All right. Do things like journaling mm. to reflect. Mm. Whatever works for you, the reflection mm. process. I always like to teach the 24-hour test. When you, when you put your head on the pillow, the pillow test, right? Mm. When you put your head on the pillow before you go to sleep at night, you ask yourself one question. I just exchanged 24 hours of my life for what happened today. Was it good enough? Mm. The trade of 24 hours. I hope you realize that you only get like on average 5,000 hours in your life, eh? 5,500 or something crazy like that. Now you wasted 24 in this day. Was it worth it? If it wasn't worth it, what do you do? You have a quick reflection because I'm telling you, if you're true to yourself, it'll tell you, okay? And you, and you need to hear it. You need to hear the, oh, you didn't speak nicely to so-and-so, or you should have done that rather than that, yeah, okay? Mm -hmm. And you acknowledge it, own it, yeah. okay? You're a person, you're going to mess up, it's okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I only have a problem if we continue making those same mistakes, yeah. okay? Because then you're not thinking about it and moving past. You're not being forward-facing, mm -hmm. okay? Say, oh, I should have spoken to somebody better. Does it need an apology? Okay, maybe I need to go and apologize to them, all right? Own it. An apology is a powerful thing. Especially if it's sincere, yeah. both for the person giving the apology and the one receiving it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, do it. And then don't go there again. Mm -hmm. When you put your head on the pillow the next night, it should not be for the same reason that you're saying, oh. mm -hmm. you understand? Because mm -hmm. that's forward facing. Mm -hmm. I'm moving forward. I'm growing as a person. I'm growing in my space. Maybe I didn't work hard enough today. I, I didn't even do any work. I'm not talking about when your kids are sick and you can't do stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like you weren't disciplined. Mm -hmm. You sat down and watched a movie and instead of doing your four hours of work or whatever the case is. And you know what? That's not freedom, hey? Because it's always at the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. hey? Freedom is doing what we're supposed to do so that we can enjoy everything. Sure. Mm -hmm. Recognize that. Mm -hmm. Freedom is not doing anything I like. Yeah. Because you always have at the back of your mind, I should be studying for that exam, I should have done this for my kid, I should have done whatever it is. The only time you can really enjoy stuff is when you've done it. Mm. And then yeah. you can be free yeah. to enjoy that. Okay. Forward facing, put the plan in place, have the vision, keep going forward, ask yourself, reflect. Okay. Do these kinds of exercises. And when you reflect, don't bully yourself. Yeah. Okay. You're human. Mm. You're going to make a mistake. Okay? I said to myself, Sherry, it was so stupid, Sherry, what are you doing? What are you going to do next time? Okay, grow, 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 be forward facing. That's the thumb. So whenever you look at your thumb, you're going to ask yourself today, what have I done to be forward facing? Maybe on the way home, you're yelling in the car at everybody because you've had a rough day. Okay? And the thumb's on the steering wheel and you really, oh, forward facing means I'm going to change my mindset here. Yeah. No, it's, been a, it's been a rough day. That's okay, they happen. All right? What am I going to do going forward? Because that's going to stop you from taking it home and making everybody else's day miserable because you had a bad day. Yeah. Okay. That's not emotionally intelligent to do that. All right. Next one is your pointer finger. Okay, we're going to point it straight up here because the next one, the next F is for faith. Okay. You need to build and have faith in something bigger than you. Okay. You need to have the knowledge that there is something bigger and better at work than just you. Because if, it's if this world's relying on you, we're in chaos. 
<laughs> and we really are, because there's so many people that think the world revolves around them. Okay. No. Faith. For me, I'm a Christian. This reminds me, God is important in my life. What is important about faith, okay, and building that faith as part of your resilience, is faith provides the foundation. Okay. When I fall, when things collapse and things get bad and things are hectic, and I fall, I hit a rock. I don't just keep falling. Yeah. You understand? I'm hitting this foundation that tells me, Cherie, you believe it not to murder. You understand? So that stops me from doing that. Right? Cherie, you believe that people have value and their life is worthwhile. Cherie, you believe that in love and kindness and patience. And you understand? It helps me to have that foundation for any situation. No matter what comes, I know what I'm supposed to do. Okay, and that is such a big help because you don't just keep falling. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got somewhere, you stop somewhere mm -hmm. and you can pick yourself up and you can walk, walk forward on that foundation. So the F reminds me, I've got to build my faith, whatever way that is, whatever it's in. Because your faith needs to answer questions like, why am I here? Yeah. Yeah. What is my purpose? Yeah. Yeah. What happens when I die? Yeah. Why was the universe created? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Why does it exist? It has to answer those questions. Those answers are not found in me. Yeah. They're found in something much bigger than me. For me, it's found in God. Yeah. Okay. And I'm talking the Christian God. <laughs> okay, because there's many others. But you need to build your faith. That means that I'm going to have to take time out to go to church. I'm going to have to take time out to do devotions and pray. I'm going to have to time, you understand? Yeah. Because it's in those times that I build my faith and my foundation remains firm. Okay. So hard things come my way, but I'm like, I know exactly what I need to do here. Yeah? Yeah. Because I'm grounded in my faith. Yeah. This finger reminds me, build your faith. What did you do today to build your faith? Okay. Yeah. This finger, excuse me. <laughs> I'm not pulling his head tight at you, okay? But what it does, this middle finger tells us focus. The F is for focus, okay? It's actually quite a nice finger for that because it's like, <laughs> okay, you're all focused on it. <laughs> all right, and this simply reminds you to remain focused. Okay, so many of us, when challenges come and things go wrong or we stress, we forget that we can just focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember I told you we, we're functioning here at the amygdala in the emotional fright, fright or freeze mm -hmm. space, or we're functioning here at the frontal cortex where I can think and I can get out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, your choice. Mm. All right, this is, takes practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, bring yourself back to a focus point. Remember I said to you what you focus on grows. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you focus on making your systems and your business so efficient that there's no stress, you're going to get it right because you're focused on it. If you focus on growing a team that knows exactly what to do and how to do it and when to do it and they're feeling empowered and satisfied in their job, you're going to get a team that does that. Yeah. Okay. If you focus on becoming healthy and well and strong, you're going to get it. Okay. If you focus on increasing your sales and bringing in more income, you're going to get it. Because what you focus on will grow. Okay. This finger reminds you Where's your focus? Okay, so when you're running around in the day, letting a stupid email take you totally off track. Yeah. Okay, mm. because this is what happens. When you're one email in the morning and suddenly we spend the whole day answering that email. Yeah. Okay. Two no, days. No, no. days. <laughs> okay. You, you get to, you, you must focus on fixing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. If that, if it takes you two days to answer that email, you need to ask yourself why. Mm -hmm. Am I not in an emotional space to develop? Then develop your emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, or are they asking for information that I haven't got set up yet? Mm -hmm. Set it up. Mm -hmm. So that next time it's a cut and paste exercise. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. Solve the problem but focus. Mm -hmm. well, bring yourself back to focus. Mm -hmm. What am I trying to achieve today? What is my goal today? Put it on your list. The three things. No more than three a day. The three things I need to do today. Sure. Okay. No more than three. Mm. If you finish those three and you're still energetic and stuff, add one. Mm. Okay. But only three. It's been scientifically proven that people cannot focus on more than three things at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you said today, what are my three goals for today? 
Uh, I want to catch up with the laundry. I want to, uh, you know, uh, create my marketing campaign for the next month. And I want to do whatever. Okay, focus. Do it. Mm. And when you sit down, you're not like, oh, you know, when you get interrupted and you sit down, you're not like, oh, where was I? Mm. Well, I'm there. I, I'm doing my marketing campaign. Um, you yeah. understand? There's not a million things that I can pick up and get uh, strong on by. Yeah. I'm terrible with communication in terms of emails and things because I look at them once in the morning if I'm there. If I'm out training, I don't even look at it. Mm. Okay. Because that's not my focus point. Mm. My focus point is not on answering an email. Mm. Okay, I, I will answer you, but that's not how my business runs. Mm. Okay, people know how to get connected to me if they need me. Mm. Okay, here we've got what is this finger? A ring finger, eh? Family, Family friends, fellowship. Mm. Okay, and I want you to use those three F words family, friends, fellowship. Because one thing that you need to do to be continually resilient is build these relationships. Relationships do not happen by accident. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I know we, get our, we, we don't get to choose our parents and, and things. Okay, but you get to choose the relationship you have with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it means I have to have time to build relationships. Okay, because let me tell you, if you're going to build a business, or if you're going to run a business or own a business or even if you're going to work in business you're going to need them yeah. okay that means i have to sacrifice time to build strong relationships have conversations be vulnerable spend quality time do things that they may be like that i'm not so keen on yeah okay that's okay because they do vice versa right they'll do sometimes things that i like that they don't like okay but we spend time building our relationships Friends are not something that you should go off one hand naming them. Okay. If you've got more than five friends, I'm going to question your friendships. Yeah. Because none of you have time enough to build proper friend relationships with more than five people. True. Mm -hmm. Just a way anyway. Everybody else is a situational acquaintance. Oh, yeah. so that's the person I go to the movies with. Yeah. That's the person I brunch with. That's the person I gym with. That's the person I walk with. They're not necessarily your friends. Yeah. When life fails you, it's your friends that sit by you and cry with you. It's your friends that will make you all the meals and help you. Okay. That's why I say there's only a few people in your life that you'll be blessed enough to have. <laughs> that you can call friends. Mm. And you build those relationships. You need to be a friend back. Mm. That yeah. means you need to gonna have to sacrifice time to go and cry with them yeah. when they're upset. Yeah. You're gonna have to go and mourn with them. You're gonna go have to go and make them food when they can't. You're gonna have to take the kids to school when they can't. Whatever it is, those are friend relationships. Mm. Okay, the yeah. ones that disappear, the mm. instant you don't have you know, where you can't give. Mm -hmm. They're not your friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. Spend time building family relationships, friends relationships. The last one is fellowship. Fellowship is what? This is now all the other relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, going to networks. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fellowship. Mm -hmm. This kind of a thing is a fellowship thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's where I get to connect with people in a similar space to me. And I get to learn from yeah. them, I get to encourage wow. them, they get to encourage me. Mm. We balance this. You've got to build that. Mm. Where am I networking? Where am I hanging out? Mm. Fellowship would be going to church too. Mm. Like-minded people together, right? To build, encourage. Right. Mm. What did you do today to build your friends, family, and fellowship? Mm. Right. The last little finger, little baby pinky. Yeah. Okay, it's for fitness. Okay. Fitness. Now, what do I mean when I say fitness? Okay, I'm not meaning you have to run the comrades marathon. All right. What do they say you have to have to, for your heart to be healthy? Twenty minutes of active activity every day. Twenty minutes. Okay, where your heart rate shoots up above normal mm. and you keep it there. Well, that could be when you're starting out just walking. Mm. Okay, yeah. where as you get fitter, you need to run a little bit or whatever to get that heart rate up. That's all you have to do. 
okay? If you've got a bit of excess weight to lose, okay, because it's not helping your health and your fitness, then you need to do other things mm -hmm. and you need to get the right people to help you do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't do it alone, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, fitness also means, am I getting enough? Sleep. Mm -hmm. Right, I want to tell you a little interesting fact that I learned going through all my insomnia business. Our body heals itself while you sleep. Yeah. Okay, now if you are not getting good enough sleep, your body is not healing itself. Yeah. Your cortisol levels, your stress levels are high and you're waking up anxious. Yeah. Okay, now what do you need to do? Here's the interesting part. Between half past 11 at night time, this is normal circadian rhythms, okay? Mm -hmm. Between half past 11 at night and 2 o'clock in the morning, your body is healing itself physically. Mm. It's replacing cells, it's uh, getting rid of waste in your liver, it's why you wake up in the morning desperate for the loo because your kidneys have done their clearing out, you understand? Mm -hmm. It's physically cleaning itself, okay? And healing itself, replacing the, your hair is growing, the, the cells on your skin are being rejuvenated and refreshed and stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. Between 2 and 20 past 4 in the morning, okay, your body is mentally healing itself. Between 2 and 20 past 4. Now I'm willing to bet if you wake up between 2 and 4 in the morning, you're so anxious. You've woken up like this mm -hmm. and in panic. Okay, mm -hmm. because your mind is in that stage of processing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to sleep through that so that your mind can process. It's also a thing that we need to do to give our mind stuff to heal. Mm -hmm. Is before you go to bed, a good exercise is just write down everything you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to make sense. You'd never have to read it again. Just buy a scrap little notebook and just for five minutes, just write. Doesn't have to be spelled right, doesn't have to look grammatically correct, it doesn't have to have anything, just write it down. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that is the start of the process for your mind to start processing and healing. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you'll find you'll wake up with answers. You mm -hmm. went to bed with questions and woke up like, oh, I should just do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's healing sure. itself. It's healing itself mentally and emotionally. Sure. So what does this tell you? If between half past 11 and 20 past 4, our body is healing itself, mm -hmm. When should you be sleeping? At that time. At least between half past 11 and 20 past 4. Yeah. So don't get up earlier than 20 past 4. And don't go to bed later than half past 11. Consistently. Mm. It's okay if you go to a wedding every now and again. And you, know, you stay up for one or whatever the case is. But it should not be your normal. Because you're not giving your body time to heal. And then you're wondering why you're so stressed and overwhelmed. Okay. Fitness also talks about what am I eating? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I will tell you that most of the disease and illness that we have it in this day and food. age comes from incorrect food. Yeah. It comes from years of eating the wrong things. Okay. Your body needs a variety of nutrition and it needs it all the time. Follow the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time I'm eating what I'm supposed to and 20% of the time I can enjoy the cake or I can enjoy whatever it is. Okay. Right? But that means I have to get nutrition in. Okay. How do I get nutrition in? You eat food as close to its original source as possible. Yeah. Not processed. Okay. If you're going to eat lettuce, it's not pre washed, salted lettuce, whatever. You understand? It's just lettuce, clean and on your plate. You understand? If, you go, if you're going to eat a hamburger, get fresh ground meat that's not grown with hormones and all these kinds of things yes. and you make your own little burger and you put it on you're going to make your own little bread with four ingredients not the 50 that's on the packet that keeps it fresh for 300 days <laughs> okay no, i'm serious so that's how you get your nutrition in eat as close to its original source as possible yeah. cook it at home so you know what goes in <clears throat> okay then you can you then you don't have to worry if you're doing that 80 percent of the time Go and have your once a week meal out or whatever the case is. Okay. But fitness includes all of this. Where am I physically? How am I eating? What am I eating? Am I drinking enough water? You have to drink water. I don't care if you don't like it. You have to drink it. Okay. You, you, because that's part of the cleaning of your system, right? Yes. Okay. You have to make sure that you get enough sleep. You have to make sure you get enough for the right exercise. Okay. You have to make sure that your mental health is strong. 
Right, that means I might need to go and talk to somebody, I might need to go and learn coping mechanisms for whatever I'm going through, right? But we're going to get that help in the right place. That's all fitness. If you do those five things, be forward facing, grow your faith, be focused, build your friends, family, fellowship relationships, and watch your fitness, there is nothing that you will come across that you can't cope with. Okay. Remember, my whole, whole ordeal started with not sleeping properly. Mm. One simple thing that I had control over, that had a choice around, and it turned my world upside down. Mm. It also had a whole lot of emotional trauma with it because I wasn't dealing with it. Mm. Okay, fitness. Right. Each day, work on those five things a little bit. You will build your resilience, and you will find yourself coping with more and more you'll find yourself making better and better choices. Okay, so what I want to leave you with here, leaders make the right choice. Okay, whether it be for your team or for yourself, we make that good choice. Okay, and the choice is not what heads me to burnout. The choice is what heads me towards success. All right, you win or lose by the way you choose decides to decide right. All right, I'm done. Wow. 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 <laughs> I'm definitely giving you a standing ovation. <laughs> um, but I don't know if there was anyone who did not feel that.